Hi guys, picked this up today. I was looking for a simple little night light um, to put in my living area just at night time so it comes on automatically and um, if I wander out in the middle of the night I'm not bumping into furniture and bits and pieces. Um, this one here was quite cheap and it was the same price basically as like a standard like plug-in night light. Um, but this one has a few other features which I thought was quite interesting and, and worthy of a teardown. So it's it's got the 240 volt um, plug pack here and then it's got this sort of LED torch sort of a thing um, and apparently this will just slide into here and then it recharges so it sort of serves three functions you've got like the standard night light which is when this thing's plugged in and in, in the charging slot and it automatically turns on from a light sensor when it gets dark uh, then if the power goes out it'll automatically turn on to torch mode so it'll start um, you know illuminating um, but also if you take it out of its cradle you can walk around with it and use it like a torch with this push button and it's got a few different modes. I thought it might be interesting also to see how the charging circuitry works and it looks like if you look at this it's got this loop so I imagine there's a coil in there and another coil in the handle here and it's doing wireless charging um, sort of like an inductive charging mode because uh, it does say it's got a lithium ion battery 400 milliamp hours not a hell of a lot um, eight LEDs in the torch and all these different modes and things uh, which we can look at in a bit. Um, so I'm going to break this packet open and uh, we'll see exactly what we got inside and um, I do want to use this so I'm, I'm hoping not to get too destructive with the teardown I'm hoping it's just sort of clip plastic I can snap apart and things but uh, yeah we'll, we'll see how we go. Alright so that's it there it's really quite lightweight. Um, what does that say? Crest brand, indoor use only, 240 volt, 1 watt, so barely any power going through that and it wouldn't have to because that's going to be plugged in at all times pretty much so it doesn't it doesn't need much of a charging current considering it's going to be basically 24-7 in the charging dock. So we got one screw here in the back and it looks like a translucent bit of plastic so maybe there's a light night light comes out the bottom here uh, but that looks good hopefully we just undo that and it's a couple of clips and it comes apart you can see just standard sort of through hole LEDs there and then like T5 size push button perhaps a light sensor there uh, yeah so we'll have a look at that in a sec and this one hmm, there's probably a screw I can't feel a screw under the label there but that's a little bit loose so yeah, we'll have to have a bit of a closer look at that and see how we can unclip it or take it apart without breaking it. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with the torch section and uh, unscrew this. Alright. This doesn't have a seam in it, so maybe this whole front piece will come out. Okay, okay, yeah, so there's a clip there. Another one there. So there is an LED at the back there. There's our lithium cell. Now I'm not sure how this front is supposed to is supposed to come off. There we go. So that's the end come off. So there's a couple of bits of plastic there. There's the end cap, hopefully. I'm actually scratching this and doing a little bit of damage. Well, I suppose it can't be helped at this point. This is a little plastic, a chromed plastic bezel there. There we go, okay. We can take that apart. So not a bad little design here. Get you in for close up so you can see there's a couple of ICs. There's a LiPo, so it'd be some sort of charging circuit. There's the inductor there, the coil. So that's charging off of this. So when that plugs in, there'd be a coil going this direction, and then that uh, obviously picks up through the air gap. It picks up that charge and um, comes in here. And this would be some sort of charge circuitry and some other bits and pieces. It's nice they got the battery and a little connector. So I'll just carefully undo that. 
So there's the markings on the little battery, 400 milliamp hours as advertised, 3.7 volt, made in China, um, looks like January 2015. So that's all good. And we've got a little separate PCB here for the LEDs. It's quite simple, it looks like they're all in parallel, judging by how the, the leads are sort of going across to that central positive plate and you got the negative around the perimeter there so they're all in parallel so that'll be running at you know the three volts or whatever it is and then I'm um, just drawing a bit more current um, that looks like a little light sensor and our little LED on the bottom here would be for the um, night mode so I'm going to uh, put this under the microscope and see if I can read some of the chips off here and get an idea of how this is all working. Alright, so I've got this under my little cheap Andenstar microscope um, and I can focus that in there. So what I've done is I've just taken the battery out, the battery is just over here. I've unplugged that, that goes on the bottom of this. Um, and then you can see I'm just sort of, there's the, uh, the charging coil, you get to focus on that. Now, I wasn't sure whether that was glued in or not. I think it may be, but in anyways, I didn't want to disturb it too much or, or risk breaking that. So I haven't taken that out. I'm going to leave that in there. And that, so the PCB is still just attached with these wires. Um, if you look on this side of the PCB, there's the LED. You see the, um, the inductors wires going in the back there. There's a battery connector and see some identifiers there. Uh, there's a push button for the torch. And there's this PRI, and as far as I'm aware, that's the light sensor. Um, actually, I might have a bit of a close-up on that and see if we can see inside of that a little bit better. Um, I've sort of got to manual focus this as I go, so you can see in there there's that, that sort of cup on top. Let's have a quick look at that, I reckon. You can sort of see there's a bond wire going on top, and maybe that's another wire connection in the corner there. And then it's got these sort of traces or something or other going through there. So that's, there's an air bubble in there too, in the resin. So that's what the uh, light sensor looks like up close. Uh, let's flip the board over and we'll have a look at these chips. So you see the charge coil coming in here. And basically how this works is, if you imagine like a traditional AC transformer where you're dropping, say, 240 volt mains down to 12 volts or something like this, you'd have your primary coil, which is on the mains, and your secondary coil with lesser windings and then that would be what this one is. Now I don't know if it's got more or less windings or whatever but we're going to call this a secondary coil and basically over the air gap the um, primary coil is is uh, an AC, there's an AC current going through that coil and it generates an electromagnetic charge and the, and the mag magnetic charge goes over the air gap this then picks it up and induces the, the electric charge back here on the PCB and you can see They've got a little negative sign there by the looks of it. Um, but you can see this, this ground plane here is shared with this LED and there's a positive, positive side of the LED. So we can pretty safely say that this is a negative side of the coil and this is the positive side. Or, I mean, it's, it'll be AC fluctuating at some sort of frequency that I'm not, not aware of what that is. But um, basically this is where it comes in here and then it gets filtered a little bit here through this capacitor. And you can see it's then rectified through D1 here. So any negative voltage coming off this coil is basically blocked by this diode. Any positive charge gets sent through. And then we've got resistors and capacitors and things. This is doing some more smoothing, some more filtering, just to get that, uh, that charge looking more like direct current instead of um, AC or alternating current. Um, and then it sort of goes into the rest of the circuitry here. Um, it looks like this one's pretty clear, DW01. I'm going to quickly Google that and see what, what that IC is. So DW01 looks to be a lithium ion or lithium polymer battery cell protection IC. So oftentimes you can get these little LiPo cells and I have protection circuitry inbuilt and it's basically something like this chip. But in this case it does um, like over current, over voltage protection, um, and it has uh, a few other features like that, but basically it's, it's protecting the lithium cell so it doesn't overcharge or burn up or do something crazy. Um, if you get shorted, then this chip will take it out of circuit instead of letting the thing blow up, basically. 
So this chip here next to it is the FS8205A and that looks like a dual channel MOSFET specifically built for lithium ion protection circuitry as well. So it looks like these two chips in tandem are, are responsible for the battery protection. So U1 is definitely doing all the LED control. Um, I mean these little chips will be doing all the like bright dim flashing modes and all that sort of carry on. Um, the black, this black and red lead over this side they go off to the eight LEDs in parallel. The black one goes up here and the red one comes down here and you can see it sort of gets soldered from the other side here and that goes through this transistor uh, which is being driven from this pin over here which is pin six by the looks of it. Um, so this has no markings, I can't tell what it is exactly but you see the push button then goes into pin three over here so it'll just be like a, you know, off the shelf, put, whack it in your board and it'll control. Just having a look at this inductive charging again. So we've got negative rail through here, positive rail gets rectified, filtered, so you've got DC basically at this point. If we slide across, this is our battery terminals here, and you see that's all running up into this area, battery protection and everything. This here is our light sensor up the top, top right, and that's feeding through these transistors. Um, so that's obviously switching power on the LED at the back here. But I, I just don't see, I mean these, as far as I'm aware, these chips, are, this is just a dual MOSFET and this thing is just a battery protection chip. So I imagine what they're doing is they're just always charging the lithium battery and just relying on this chip to take the battery out of circuit when it gets up to a certain voltage, which is probably going to be most of the time of things, this thing's sitting in the wall. Um, so I don't see it doing any proper charging cycle, like constant current and then doing, you know, your voltage control and all these sort of things. Um, I believe they're just sort of like always putting like a really rough sort of voltage through this coil. And I mean, they do filter it and things here um, and then just feed that into the battery. And when the battery gets, the voltage gets too high, as the current drops off as it's charging and everything, I think this chip just goes too high, bang, turns it off through this MOSFET, and that's it. So that's essentially your battery charge circuitry. Pretty uh, pretty rough, but I mean, this is a very cheap board. Okay, so we've had a bit of a look at that torch unit, or the LED light battery unit. Now I'm interested in seeing what's inside this, and I imagine it's gonna be a small circuit board and a charging coil, and that's it. Um, I'm not sure how to get this thing apart. There doesn't seem to be any screws anywhere by the looks of it. There's nothing under this label, maybe. Oh, hang on. No, I could be wrong. It feels like, I might have been wrong before actually. It feels like there may be a couple of screw holes. If you can see the dimples there. So let's have a look at that. Well, before I destroy this label, you can see the model number and the other details there. There we go, yeah. That's an awful sticker because it left all the adhesive on the plastic, which is gross. I'm going to have to clean that off with some isopropyl. But good news is we've got two Phillips head screws in there. So no safety screws, which is what we like. Okay. Oh, that was nice and easy. Okay, so I just want to be careful with this, but I have managed to get this PCB out of there. Now these little tiny wires on that coil, I don't want to don't want to break them, so I'll just be gentle. You see on this side we've got electrolytic capacitor. It looks like a fuse of some sort with this heat shrink. Big mains cap. Turn it over. So on this side a bridge rectifier, and then that'll be DC coming out here. So you've got DC. I say DC because it is smooth. They've got this electrolytic cap here. So from there, this circuitry here with the transistor must be doing the um, must be pulsing it. Um, so it's generating that magnetic field that is then picked up on the torch and this little coil that sits in the corner there. Um, so maybe it's just a simple um, oscillator in there with some resistors, capacitors, and the transistor just opens and shuts and just pulses away. And then the other, the little coil in here, that coil back in there, just picks up that pulsing and converts it back into. Um, through its rectifier back into DC and it powers the circuitry in here and charges the battery. So there it is, so that's what you get in a Crest 
emergency torch and nightlight. Um, quite cheap and obviously uh, cheaply built. It's uh, decent enough design. I mean, it's a little bit rough in the battery charging and bits and pieces, but you know, for the price point and everything, it's uh, it's actually not too bad. Um, so I'm going to put this thing back together. I'm pretty sure I didn't break anything. I did scratch the plastic a little bit with a spudging tool, but uh, no big deal. We'll get it back together. Um, I'm going to put this thing on charge and uh, then we'll have a click around the buttons and just see what this thing looks like. Quickly, I'm going to show you how this thing operates. So at the moment, it's plugged in and the GPO here is switched on. So this thing's now charging. If the power's to go off in the house, it turns on the torch. So it sort of illuminates it's like the emergency light function. Um, power goes back on. It's all good. So it's obviously detecting that with the um, charge current there. Now, when it gets dark, if I cover that, you can see the light on the bottom illuminates automatically. So that's how that works. And at, in the nighttime, if I want to, I could grab this thing out like a torch and again, it just turns on automatically. It's not hugely bright, but it would be enough in a dark house to sort of see your way around and you can click it and go extra bright, which isn't too bad. You can see that there. And it's got dim mode and then this flashing mode that every torch seems to have, which I don't know what it's supposed to do, but yeah, there you go. And then off. So it's like a little mini torch. You put it back in the cradle and it keeps charging. So that's how the thing works. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.